Hey, which glasses look better on me? Oh, what's this? Zenny's 3D virtual try-on. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. Uh, I don't know about the purple cat eyes. I think they're fun. What about these tortoise shell glasses? Or these rimless sunglasses? Oh, what about these clear frames? Wait, are those prices real? Do they have glasses for men? Yep. They also have affordable blue light glasses. Seriously? At those prices? Get them all. I like where this is going. Zenny.com. Quality prescription glasses starting at six ninety five. Hey, this is Steve. This is the Murder Monday podcast, and this is called When the Baker Becomes the Butcher. Alaska, known for being both remote and beautiful. It's hard to find a place on our globe that hasn't been explored or touched. The state of Alaska is sparsely populated with rugged terrain and more land than people, which is perfect if you have a thirst to kill. In the 1970s and 80s, Alaska had a second major boom. This time, people didn't rush to the northern state for gold as much as they did to help build the Alaskan pipeline. Anchorage, Alaska was a frontier town. The days were shorter, the nights longer, and it was a revolving door of labor. In the early 1980s, two off-duty police officers were out moose hunting when they came across what appeared to be human remains in a shallow grave. Along with the remains, they found a shotgun casing. The dental records showed that it belonged to a woman that had been reported missing a year earlier. This, this woman was an exotic dancer. year after that, while building a road through the Alaskan wilderness, a construction crew made another horrible discovery. It was 1983, the remains of a young woman who had been missing for nearly six months, along with a shotgun shell, similar to the one found a year earlier. Investigators had a hunch that something was going on, so they sent that shell to the FBI and found that both shells had come from the same gun. Police knew there was a problem, but didn't know the extent of it. Yet. The problem is, in a city like Anchorage, it's full of strangers. New people would come to Anchorage, Alaska every day. It wasn't uncommon for people to leave as quickly as they arrived, and for police, unless there was a body, it was hard to tell the difference between the two. That is, until June 13th, 1983, when an exotic dancer named Cindy Paulson had been working when a man pulled up and offered her $200 for her services. This man was thin, had acne scars and a stutter, not concerned, got into his car. And when she did, this man slipped handcuffs on her wrists and put a gun to her head. He then drove Cindy to his home, forced her inside and assaulted her. Several hours later, he put a chain around her neck and secured her to a wooden post. Morning eventually came and this man drove her to a nearby airfield where he had an airplane waiting. The airfield was deserted and Cindy sat on the floor of the man's car, her hands cuffed in front of her. The man got out of the vehicle to check the airplane. Cindy felt like she had nothing to lose. She looked out the window and noticed that the man had his back to her. He was looking at the plane. So she crawled into the driver's seat, opened the door, and ran. Cindy ran as fast as she could, still handcuffed and only wearing a shirt and her underwear. A passing by trucker noticed her and picked her up and offered to take her to the police station, but Cindy said no, instead wanting to go to a nearby inn. She jumped out of the truck and safely got inside. But the trucker knew that there was something wrong, so he continued on to the police station, notifying them of the handcuffed and terrified woman he had just picked up. Police returned to the inn and found Cindy. When they found her, she was still crying and still handcuffed, so they removed the handcuffs and took her to the police station, where she gave a description of the man. She gave a description of some of the many animal trophies the man had in his home. She also talked about the airplane. Police went to the airport where that airplane was a short time later. There, they were given a name of who owned that airplane. What police didn't know in that moment, they were dealing with one of the evilest serial killers in US history. Who was that person? We'll find out next on Murder Monday.
During the 1970s and 80s, workers came to Alaska to help build the Alaskan Pipeline, and the city of Anchorage, Alaska benefited the most from the influx of population. Workers came from around the country to work different professions, but during that period, a number of exotic dancers disappeared. Some decided to leave town. Many were never heard from ever again. During that period of time, the value to find out where they could be wasn't on top of the priority for the police until the early 1980s when the bodies of exotic dancers were found in the Alaskan wilderness. Then, in June of 1983, an exotic dancer was kidnapped at gunpoint, taken prisoner, but able to escape just before being loaded into a small plane by her attacker. The owner of that plane was a well-known local. He was part of the church, a family man, and the owner of a bakery, and an avid hunter. His name is Robert Hansen. When police went to speak to Hansen, many of his friends gave him a clear alibi. For police, they had no issue believing Hansen's story, because who would you believe? Hansen, who was respected, or a local exotic dancer who had just been there a few months. But one investigator just couldn't get over Cindy's story, the woman who had gotten away from her attacker. And that's because over the next few months, investigators in Anchorage, Alaska began finding more and more bodies. Investigators knew that there was something wrong. There are too many coincidences. And while the local baker, Robert Hansen, had super strong alibis, he also had a record. Over the last 20 years, he had been in trouble with the law, but people always seemed to vouch for him. They always had his back, and he seemed to get the benefit of the doubt. Robert Hansen had actually grown up in Iowa, a shy guy that never got attention from girls, moved to Alaska and opened up a bakery, gotten married, and had children. He was well-liked and respected, an excellent hunter and pilot, similar to what police were starting to believe were the calling cards of a killer. And they were right. Because a warrant was issued for Robert Hansen's house, plane, and bakery, and it produced a ton of damning evidence. A search of Hansen's home revealed a variety of secret compartments and hidden rooms, including a soundproof room in his basement that held a map of Anchorage marked with 20 axes marked in red. It's now believed that that's where he buried all of his victims. In the attic of his home, police found an extensive jewelry collection, trophies that he had kept from his victims, as well as a 22 caliber rifle. In the days that followed the search of his home, those that once claimed to have been his alibi came around and admitted that they were lying. When police were finally able to interrogate Richard Hansen, he eventually cracked, admitting to being responsible for the murder of 17 women between 1971 and 1983. Robert Hansen had treated murder like it was hunting. After assaulting his victims, he would let them out of the vehicle, telling them that they could run, which is when he would hunt them down and murder. Hansen should have been caught and prosecuted years earlier, but it was a perfect storm of circumstances allowing him to remain free and kill. He was a skilled liar who was able to talk himself out of almost any situation. After losing interest in hunting down his prey, he got his pilot license and bought his own plane, allowing him to kill and dump bodies in remote locations. Robert Hansen was eventually found guilty of murder and sentenced to over 400 years in prison, but died of cancer in 2014.